Good morning, everyone. Um, here's a plane that I've actually owned for a while, and uh, but I've just done a refit to it and thought it was worthy of a video just to give a, a bit of an overview of the build and uh, obviously the plane itself. Um, many of you may recognise this as the MyFly Dream Crosswind Mini or Mini Crosswind or CWM or MCW. It has many different names and acronyms, but it's it's officially the MyFly Dream crosswind mini mini is a little bit of a uh, misnomer uh, as it is a 1600 millimeter wingspan um, so it, it's it's not a small plane but it's mini compared to their other version so uh, let's just start at the front really um, so I've got in here this Pito is going to a Matic um, digital airspeed sensor and you can hear You've got the pipes here running, also the tubes, to the sensor which sits down in there. Uh, the battery is, um, this is one I've just made up myself, this is a 4S 5P um, pack with, um, I'm using the Molycell P42As in here, so it's 21,000 milliamp hours. And if we go to the motors, these are actually quad motors, and if I just uh, fling the camera around here, See there, the um, MT281410 uh, 770kV motors. Um, sorry, I can't quite see that there. Uh, running APC 10x7 props. I've got the GPS under here. Where I'm using a um, Foxeer M10250 GPS. I found these to be really good. Um, they get satellite fixed really, really quickly and a good lock on the satellites as well. If we just open up here you can see there's a massive space in there um, there's there's space aplenty so I'm just going to come around the side of this wing and uh, for the flight controller I've got the um, just the venerable Matek F405 wing and this is the V2 version um, so you've got the USB-C I think there's a few other changes they change the um, the barrow and the gyro and things like that I've tried to keep all my wiring nice and neat so it's all tucked away in here and then obviously underneath here as well. And this is all direct soldered so I've got no pins, it's all, every, all the wires are direct soldered so nothing can come loose in flight is the idea. If we just move down to the back now, so this little heatsink here is for the, um, the receiver and I'm using um, a system called MLRS which sounds similar to ELRS but it is quite different. The way MLRS works is it's more um, focusing on the telemetry link so it's a it's a one watt system this is the 2.4 gigahertz version and it's a one watt telemetry bi-directional um, and obviously has the RC link on yeah, as part of that as well so you get tremendous range uh, and also full telemetry for, for the entirety of <laughs> the transmission um, and and it it is really quick if you're collecting to um, MWP tools or um, Mission Planner. It's it's almost like being plugged in with the USB. It is super super fast. Um, so great great little um, receiver there. And on the back of the radio here, I've got the um, module. So you buy it sort of a, as a as a board, and you three D print your own case. And um, for the antennas, I'm of course using the True RC. Um, min, um, Mox, true Mox, 2.4, and this is the 2.4 true RC barred pole. Uh, coming to the back here, uh, these antenna. so basically if I unscrew here, I've got the VTX in here, and I'm using the Walksnail GT VTX, which is their 2 watt uh, most powerful version, and I've got the UFL connector going to these SMA pigtails, so I can just swap the antennas. Uh, at the moment I've just got these um, cherry stubby antennas on there because um, I'm not doing long range flights at the moment I'm just doing some tuning flights getting everything set up so these are easier just to whack in and out <laughs> so um, yeah they're, they're perfectly good but so the VTX is in here and the MIPI cable for the camera goes up to here so I've got the uh, camera positioned up in the tail this tape is sort of temporary I'll, I'll make a more elegant solution um, but at the moment I'm sort of just getting it set up the way I like it. So yeah, don't judge me too harshly on the um, <laughs> slightly ungainly uh, white tape. 
and um, so yeah and the camera here this is the Walksnail Pro camera as well so yeah, brilliant camera for, for what I need which is generally flights which go into the evening or, or early morning flights when the weather's calm for, for long range um, and that's what this is set up for this is is my long range rig um, what I'm hoping to do I set myself a little <laughs> challenge and I'll flash up a picture of the ground station I've been working on which is a little bit um, OTT, but with the big long range antennas I've got for here, I, I'd quite like to shoot for 60 kilometers range if possible, obviously in ideal legal uh, conditions. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that's the idea, um, which if we can get it would be, be quite amazing. Uh, servos in here, uh, for all the servos, wings and tail and rudder, I'm just using the Emacs ES08, um, Metal Gear Digital, um, brilliant servos. They're, they're not expensive and they're, they're reliable. They just you know, work well. Um, what else is it to show you? All oh, right, yes, yeah, so we go underneath the wings here. Look underneath here. You can see here I have these little clivets here, and these are actually navigation lights. So the, this is a navigation um, light, and this is a, a white strobe. So um, thinking uh, this would be the green one right wing so green on this side red on the other and these are super bright these are from flytron the, these are the um nav xl i think it's called i'll add a link to it below but they are faa um stroke caa approved lights and they have a three mile visible range and um, they are <laughs> quite tremendous uh i think that's pretty much it really um it's it's a yeah you know, fairly simple build. What I'm doing at the moment as well is um, I have been flying this on iNav and I've I've just gone back to trying RG Pilot, um, just because <laughs> I like to kind of keep my hand in things really. Um, so you know I, I do love iNav as a system, but I think RG Pilot is also very good, and I like to use both where possible just to um, keep my hand in. And sometimes one is more suitable for a flight than the other. So, and it's it's so easy to flash one to the other these days. But by keeping one's hand in it, um, things like the uh, mission um, mission planner uh, setup it doesn't become quite such a daunting task for anyone that's uh, new to RG Pilot. Well, um, or coming from I I to RG Pilot will understand. Um, so the flight I'm going to show now is actually the maiden flight with the refit um, flashed onto RG Pilot. So, um, and in that flight, I am testing the, um, well, so the idea was to calibrate the airspeed sensor and do an auto tune. And you'll see in a second why that wasn't quite as easy as I hoped it might be, uh, considering that there was no wind. Uh, at least that was the apparent situation that there was no wind. It turned out uh, at about 100 meters um, well, not even that, less than 100 metres above my takeoff position, there was extremely strong wind and turbulent wind at that. So uh, it made for an interesting flight, as we'll now see. So here we are just taking off. And uh, as you can see, not long after takeoff, things suddenly get very squirrely. And if you look at the um, airspeed and uh, the ground speed, um, you can see that there's, uh, there's quite a strong wind coming through. And um, I actually ended up looking at the um, the wind readings on, on windy.com and yeah, about uh, less than 100 metres above um, takeoff, it was about a 50 kilometre wind. And uh, what was interesting is where I was standing when I launched, it was barely a breath of wind. It was really bizarre. But um, yeah, I took off anyway and uh, sort of flew around trying to get a feel for things. And because it was a completely fresh, this isn't the maiden flight using this uh, after after flashing RG Pilot and with obviously the rebuild um, or the refit of the plane. So I um, I did an auto-tune. Probably not the best conditions really for an auto-tune being this windy. Um, but I did one anyway and it didn't seem to hurt things too much. And it did actually end up flying a little bit better after the tune. Um, in the setup I've got here um, if you look at the top um, I've made a few mistakes just with my parameter settings 
So in your top um, left, you can see the voltage and the volts, and um, they're all okay. <laughs> but uh, the little green bar showing how much batteries left um, is rapidly declining, and that was simply because I didn't have or I hadn't updated the um, capacity that I had available. So you can see now it's just gone orange. Um, so it thought I had a, I think a two and a half thousand. Uh, milliamp hour battery we're actually in in here i've got a, a twenty one thousand milliamp hour battery so um ignore <laughs> ignore the battery bug going red because there was you know no problem at all the battery you know it's still sort of yeah three point nine five volts a cell and that's even when i was pulling sixteen amps so um yeah there was lo loads of battery that there left um, so here I'm just sort of still continuing the auto tune and um, it's it's getting some data so um, I left it doing that and I'm just going to skip forward now to where I was calibrating the airspeed sensor uh, because this is quite interesting uh, I basically to calibrate the airspeed sensor um, you, you set a parameter and then when you're flying you hold a constant loop and uh, the idea is to try and do it at various different altitudes as well. So as I was holding a constant loop, um, you'll see that the plane gets just keeps getting pushed further and further away. And I'll just upload a screenshot now, and you'll see, although I was just holding the same banking angle, um, it was it was pushing me miles away. Well, not miles, but two and a half k. Um, so yeah, quite quite a strong wind, and then. I'll just skip forward now to the flight back, and you can see um, how slow I'm covering, you know, how slowly I'm covering ground despite uh, the airspeed and, and the current draw. So um, it was a pretty, pretty wild wind uh, <laughs> fighting into. But um, yeah, she's flying smoothly and uh, seemed to cope with it, yeah, very well. One of the nice things about this camera angle as well, uh, camera angle is, um, although it won't appeal to everyone. Um, or probably many at all, but you can see what's happening with the wings. So you can see, so you know the, the gusts causing the wingtips to flutter, and uh, you can just get a, a general idea of what's going on with the plane. Um, and as this is purely a long range setup, um, I think that's quite handy. So you can fl obviously fly long range, get an idea of what's happening. If, if things suddenly start getting bumpy. You might want to change your altitude or, or you know, anything like that, or, or, or you know, call it a then turn back. So it's a nice viewpoint to be able to monitor what's going on. Um, so I'm just going to wrap this one up here, really. I'm going to come back in for a landing and um, wrap it up there. Um, this is the worst landing I've had in a very long time. Uh, my excuse is I was absolutely frozen. And I could not feel my fingers at all, and um, yeah, <laughs> my hands pretty much uh, gave up um, just at the point of, of, of flaring. So it was a bit of a bounce, um, but there we are. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Any questions, please do ask in the comments, and um, I will get some more uh, video with this plane um, soon. Hopefully, I'm going to try and do some more tuning this weekend if um, the weather plays ball and then when I do have the right conditions I'm going to go for a long range um, flight attempt um, oh and here's um, when the video, video ends I will upload a, um, a screenshot just showing my ground station as well so I think with that and some high gain antennas on the plane we should be good for going to 60 kilometers um, but we'll see thanks very much for watching bye